does a dishwasher need GFCI protection? In this short video, we're going to solve it once and for all. Many contractors are failing their GFCI inspection for dishwashers because they're unsure of the rule. And the 2023 NEC came out with new rules that actually makes it easier to determine does a dishwasher need GFCI protection. Because of earlier cycles in the NEC, there's been confusion whether or not a dishwasher that isn't in the kitchen does require GFCI protection or doesn't, and we'll clear that up today. According to 2108D of the NEC, the 2023 NEC, regardless of where the dishwasher is now, it does require protection. And this applies to both cord and plug appliances and hardwired appliances. And if you look at the code section I have up here now, the slide I have up right now, 2108D of the 2023 NEC, it tells us that GFCI protection for specific appliances is now required, and this is what made it easier. In earlier cycles, it was a little confusing or they might not have called it out specifically, but now in 2108D of the 2023 NEC, it makes it very clear. And it goes into the other appliances or equipment that might require GFCI protection. Some of this hasn't changed, but some of it has. So you have a list of 12 items and number seven in the list is dishwasher. So no longer is it specific to where it is located. If it is a dishwasher under 2108D7, it has to have GFCI protection. So as an inspector, what we're looking for is that you have GFCI protection at the outlet or receptacle. And remember, I've talked about outlets and receptacles in previous videos. If the code says that there is GFCI protection required at an outlet and you have a 1900 box with wires coming out of it, that is considered an outlet. So whatever is required to be protected at that location will have to be GFCI protected. If it is a receptacle, it has to be readily accessible. It can't be behind something or you can't have to have to move something in order to reset it or to test it. A breaker is inherently accessible. It's in a panel. So oftentimes I find contractors are using GFCI breakers and that's fine, but it has to be readily accessible so someone can get to it to reset it or test it. If you're looking for more of a detailed guide regarding GFCI protection, AFCI protection, how to pass your inspection, I created a guide that makes it simple and it breaks it down in an easy to read manner. I also explain the requirements in a long form YouTube video and I have a more detailed blog post on my blog, buildingcodegeek.com. If you're looking for some great tools, and these are tools that I actually use and been using for a long time, on the slide I have up now, you see a Voltic on the left, which is great for finding hot circuits, it's very accurate. And on the right, you have a GFCI tester, which is excellent for determining if you wired the GFCI correctly and also for testing load offs of a GFCI device. I'll leave links in the description about everything I talked about today. I hope this helps you pass your next GFCI inspection. Thanks for watching.